So the first step is to get the, uh, the car on the, on the ramps or on a jack so we can access the bottom. Let's see how that works. Let's see how much access I have. Now that the vehicle is uh, lifted off the ground, we have to take that main cover off. The transmission pan is right under there. So you may have to do all of those screws, uh, take them out, but uh, the cover will still be held in place here. I don't know if you can see that. The um, when it attaches to the engine bottom cover, okay? So these two uh, four screws will actually still hold it in place even if you take all of the other ones out. So I'm gonna have to start or maybe finish by doing these bolts, okay? So I just removed the, uh, the bottom cover, the rear one, the one that uh, covers the transmission. There's a lot of screws there, or yeah, there's probably at least, uh, I'm guessing 18 or something like this. And now this is what, let's see if we can see. There you have it. This is what you're gonna find. Nicely exposed transmission pan. Okay. So uh, someone on the forum said that it, uh, it might actually be much easier to uh, get the pan out if you remove the brackets that hold the covers. So I'm looking at one right here with a couple of uh, screws connecting it to the underbody and same this one. So I may just do that next, okay? Remove these two, remove these two covers. Okay, sorry, brackets that hold the cover in place. <laughs> okay, I understand this video will be messed up because there's little space for me to get here in uh, videotape. So essentially this is looking from the front. I ended up removing the passenger side bracket that looks like so and held by these little cap on uh, screws or whatever bolts not look like a little cap so they hold the cover okay like that so 10 millimeter caps hold the bracket in place and the reason I had to remove the bracket from the passenger side of the transmission is because there is a fill hole there and the access to it will be quite hard. So it's very simple, just one screw, uh, one bolt here, one here, and you just take the caps off. Very easy. And that allows you to, uh, to get to that. So my next step would be uh, most likely to um, uh, remove the fill uh, plug to make sure uh, the fluid is leaking, dripping out, to uh, check the level of it basically and to start counting how much is, is leaking, basically, and to make sure I can refill the transmission later. Uh, the problem is I like to uh, jack up the rear of the transmission, uh, rear of the vehicle, but I'm not sure if the mount point is correct, so uh, ideally I'd like to have it level. So let's, let me see what I'm gonna do about that. So just because it was so easy and because it would give me a better access, I ended up removing both brackets. So now I have the transmission pan nicely exposed. I did the driver side bracket too, just because uh, there it is right here just because it uh, gives me a much nicer access to the whole uh, pan. So my next goal is to uh, get to the drain plug, which is there, by the uh, green yellow, uh, green sticker, and um, and see how much the fluid uh, drains out. So open the, dra the plug and see how much fluid comes out. I have my pan ready. Okay, this is really tight in there. Uh, so my next step is uh, to, uh, as I said, to remove the uh, the fill hole the fill screw hole uh, there you have it and I'm gonna use it by putting in a bit and just uh, turning the bit with the uh, I'll, I'll give you the bit size later in the under the video and um, and by turning it uh, left uh, with the adjustable screwdriver because there's really a little space here so most likely you're not gonna be able to put a socket on there I'm assuming it should be uh, in there not too uh, tightly, so I, I think the adjustable screwdriver will simply, adjustable uh, wrench will simply do, okay? So adjustable wrench to uh, remove the fill plug. Two things that tick me off about uh, fixing cars are, are lack of space, you just can't get your stuff, your tools in there. And the second one is, uh, in, is um, lack of proper tools. So even though I've been fixing cars for quite a few years, there's still not enough tools. So I, I just spent an hour trying to get this sucker in there. 
uh, with various various extensions, uh, angles, and uh, adjustable wrenches or whatever. Nothing worked. Okay, uh, adjustable wrench was fine, but uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't grabbing it uh, well enough. So this was uh, basically sliding. The uh, so finally I got this guy, this set, and I'm I'm hoping that one of these uh, Allen keys is gonna work. Okay. Basically, you only have about this much space to get in there, not that much. So, thank God I have this, just picked it up, and I'm gonna give it a shot again, trying to loosen up the, uh, the fill plug. And as mentioned, pro proper tool for, proper, uh, for the job. I got it loose now. Okay, so, if this is a size uh, eight, whatever. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the uh, the fill plug out. See how much fluid drains. Okay. So this is the situation here. I, uh, as you can see, maybe the drain uh, plug is removed. It's actually sitting down there, the one on the right, and I would guess about a quarter and a half, quarter quarter and a half drained out. From that um, and then um, yeah about a quarter and a half and then I removed the fill um, the drain the actual drain plug so the fill plug uh, about a quarter and a half and then the drain plug down below here um, they're both sizes either 8 or 10 okay the um, hex keys the um, and uh, when I removed the uh, the drain plug I would estimate maybe something like four quarts came out so maybe five and a half total something like that so my next step is to remove the uh, the pen, okay? So I'll be removing the uh, the uh, these bolts right here. So I've uh, loosened up the pen bolts. They were on uh, pretty lightly actually, and here's what I did. Sorry for the angle. Be terrible. Here's what I did to make sure the pen doesn't drop on my face. So I've loosened up a lot of, uh, pretty much all of them. Now they're pretty much hand tight. So I'll remove um, all of them now and the pen is being secured in place still by the jack stand in a, in a, in a sock. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so I am almost a bit uh, proud of myself here. The pen is down. Actually went uh, pretty painlessly. Uh, probably thanks to my jack idea in the sock, so the jack was supporting it. So when I removed the last screw, the pen was just wiggling in place a bit, which was perfect because I knew that it wouldn't just drop on me, uh, and it was uh, wasn't stuck to it or anything like that. So one thing to watch out for when you drop the pen, keep it very level uh, because there's still some fluid in the pen. Okay, whatever it didn't drain initially. So. Uh, so it was still uh, dripping, still dripping as you can see. Okay, so yep. Next thing is to uh, get the new pan and install it, basically. Here's the uh, here's the same uh, view again, but with the flash on. I turn on the flash so you guys can see better. There's a fill plug over there. And looks pretty good. So this is the fluid that uh, drained from the from the transmission. Again, I'm estimating about, about five and a half quarts, but I, I will do the math, so don't quote me just yet. I will um, pour it into a container so I can check the... Uh, uh, it's pretty dirty, so there's my pan. I'm just gonna compare it to the new one now. But quickly, I wanna show you the uh, what the uh, old fluid versus new fluid looks like. Hope you can see from this video. Uh, obviously, you can tell which one is which. 
about that. Okay, so this is 50,000 miles. Uh, no, more, sorry, this is 60,000 miles, about 100,000 kilometers. Okay. On a 535i. Not towing anything, but, you know, not being a Sunday driver either. So the difference is pretty clear. And here is the new pan. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, compare the two. Make sure everything checks out. Should be the same thing. Old one new one so installation should be pretty simple uh, the biggest nightmare right now will be filling the fluid so pumping with the transfer fluid transfer pump and uh, worse pff, if I have to keep the engine running that's even worse and my biggest worry is that uh, the car is not uh, the car is not um, horizontal so it's not flat so that's gonna be a challenge okay so one more time Old pan, new pan, pretty uh, <laughs> pretty close, should be the same. Uh, I see a small difference where the uh, where the fluid goes into the filter. I think the angle is a tad different. And just so you don't think that I uh, didn't do an accurate comparison with the f of the fluids here. Again, dark fluid and a much brighter fluid. Okay, so here it is. I put the same amount now, so so it's comparable. And I'm using this fluid here. One more shot on the two pans from a different angle. And the new pan is about to go uh, go in on the, on the car. Okay, the new pan is has been installed. I basically went, uh, I've seen some documentation on the ZF site. So basically they say it starts with the middle screws, middle bolts, and go, then uh, one, two, three, four go outwards as you tighten them. And not too tight. I don't know what the torque is, but I never use the torque wrench anyway. The, uh... So yeah, the new pan is on, sits on there nice. So the last thing and the worst pretty much uh, part of all of it, the most messy part is the uh, to fill in the, the fluid. But it's sitting on there, okay? 13, 13 bolts. So now just the fluid and the brackets, and that's it. I forgot to mention one more thing. Obviously I have to measure the fluid now, or I uh, have to put this in a different container so I can measure how much came out okay so I, I will know the target amount that has, has to go in. The new pan came uh, came with the new uh, brand new screws okay so that's one other thing to uh, to be to be aware of. Uh, 13 bolts sorry bolts not screws bolts and uh, and uh, the drain plug sorry the fill plug is brand new as well okay so it looks like this but that's my old one right here where's the old one that's the old one and this is the, the pan again One more view on the pan, just to make sure I get uh, the documentation from all different angles. Like I say, the worst part, the most messy part will now be filling the fluid. And what's even worse is that it may have require it may require the car to be running to do that. So exactly uh, less than I thought actually, exactly four liters. A uh, bit over a gallon drained from the pan and the transmission uh, at the first attempt. Here it is. Which means I have to put in at least four, maybe four and a half, accounting for a filter as well. So what I did was uh, I pumped two and a half liters, which is exactly half of this five liter container as you can see two and a half liters went in and uh, the fluid started dripping out of the fill hole so my plan now I think that's the smartest I still have a liter and a half to go or two liters almost the entire bottle 
My plan now is to uh, jack up the c let the car uh, down the ramps, so let it up the ramps. Um, I hope I can do this without starting the engine, but if not, I have to start the engine quickly. The, uh, and then um, jack up the passenger side of the vehicle because the fill hole is on the passenger side, so that should allow me to put a lot more fluid in without maybe doing this on a live engine. So car down and maybe jack up the, uh, the passenger side. Funny. I, uh, I don't think there is a way on this car to put it into neutral uh, without starting the engine. I don't know if there is. Maybe there is. I, I just don't know about it. The, uh, so I accidentally started the engine <laughs> without even uh, knowing what I'm doing. And uh, I quickly got the car off the, uh, the ramps. So now I'm going to jack up the passenger side. And, uh, and I should be able to uh, fill the rest of the fluid in. So the car is jacked up very high. As you can see. Uh, because that's going to allow me hopefully to create an angle where I can fill through the fill hole on the passenger side. Two more liters of the fluid. Okay, so this worked. I was able to put another almost what two liters in. So I only have exactly one liter left in a bottle, which means four went in. So if it wasn't for the uh, small kind of spillages and uh, the filter, I would have been just fine. But I should put maybe half a more liter in, just a half a more liter in. So my plan now is to uh, to basically uh, uh, maybe drive the car just around the block, so the fluid can go in, and then uh, and then park it since my driveway is sloping down, and park it so that um, so that the nose of the car is downwards. Which means the fill hole will be uh, will be will be on the up position, okay? Because the fill hole is in the back of the car, so that should allow me to put uh, another half liter in, hopefully. So I drove the car around with the four liters of the uh, new fluid. Everything seemed fine, uh, but I guess I'm still missing about half a liter, maybe. Considering the pump, uh, there's some leftover in the pump. There is uh, some spillage in the filter in the new pan. So this is what I did now. I parked the car rear uh, forward, meaning rear is higher now slightly higher than it was before and I jacked up the passenger car again which means the fill point should be in the lowest pass in the highest possible spot right now so let's see uh, if I can fill an uh, additional half a liter of the fluid here's the new pan from a slightly different angle more light now so as you can see it's a bit higher now because the car is uh, rear forward so I'm gonna try to fill in a little bit more. Pretty much done. So I was able to, uh, by using this setup here, and after driving for, you know, uh, two minutes around the block, I was able to pump in another liter. So I drained four liters, and I got basically five liters in, accounting for some spillage, the filter, and, and the pump that took a little bit of the fluid. So Slightly, I added this liter into this, so it's easier to pump from the big one, uh, big jug. So, uh, so there was six liters here, and uh, slightly above one left. So, should be it. Then uh, I think I'm gonna leave the uh, the cover off for a day, so I can check for leaks and stuff like that. But otherwise, just put a cover back on, and maybe a week later do another uh, one of these, just a quick uh, drain and uh, drain from the fill plug and uh, and. Um, and fill again, you know, just like that, for uh, another three years of the clean fluid. So basically what I'm going to do uh, a couple days from now when I have more time, after this fluid has been fully mixed with the, uh, with the old one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tilt the car the other way around, so the drain plug is lower than the other side of the pan, and this will allow me to drain about three liters of... Uh, because when it was flat, it drained about ha a liter so or a quart, so I'm going to drain it the other way around so, so more fluid will, will come out. If I get uh, the three liters of fluid to come out through the fill hole, remember, not the drain plug, because you don't want to drain too much, the fill hole, then, um, then, uh, then that should uh, allow me to put three more liters in, in of the brand new fluid, and this will replace basically almost all eight liters. Um, I could use, I suppose I could use the, uh, the drain plug, but I'm not sure if, uh, if it's resealable or it's just a one-time use.